Hey guys, it's Tuesday, February 14th, and this is Newswave. So the first bit of news today centers around Kodi, which is an open source media player that you can use for your PC, Raspberry Pi, pretty much any real device that would normally act like a like a media box or TV, minus the Roku sticks, which are made on some weird uh, operating system. Anyway, like uh, Amazon Fire TV sticks are hacked to, to use that or modified to use Kodi, but a lot of times you can use it on your computer, no problem. Well, it's actually heading to... Microsoft's Xbox One as a native app. And if you didn't know, Cody started as, which is funny, XBMC or the Xbox Media Center a long time ago. Uh, ended up going to PC, becoming Cody after like a little hiatus from consoles. And here we are now coming back to the Xbox One. And this is interesting because if you don't already know, people use Cody for uh, pirating purposes, I guess. Basically, you can load up Cody and you can watch most shows without having to actually buy it because people will set up portals to then stream without really downloading it. It's really interesting. And what's odd is it's going to the Xbox One. People are going to use Kodi for that purpose unless they figure out a way to block that, which I don't think they will because the whole point of Kodi is being open source and letting people do this kind of stuff. So I don't think they would block it. Now, if you actually own the stuff, Kodi is a great media center for listening to music, podcasts, all this stuff is great. You watch movies on it that you own. Like I said, through a USB stick, it works great. But it would, I think, hurt sales of movies and stuff on their, you know, their actual store when people can just watch it for free on Kodi. Again, I'll have to see what else happens here. Maybe they modify it specifically for the Xbox One to block that stuff. But if not, uh, the Xbox One will have the best media center, obviously, but it'll also have uh, a very, uh, very free media center, if you know what I mean, with all the stuff you can do on it. And if you are one of the lucky people to get a Nintendo Switch in March, specifically probably around the launch, you will be set up to try Splatoon 2 in what is being called a test fire, but is really mostly an open beta. What they're going to do is they're going to have different dates that last an hour at a time, and they're just going to try to congest the servers as much as possible. The good side effect is you get to try Splatoon 2 and see if you like it. This worked well with Splatoon 1 because a lot of people who did not know much about it got to try it. and made fans out of a lot of people who may not have bought it. But here we go with Splatoon 2, same deal. It's called Test Fire or Open Beta. It's going to be on a couple different dates, March 24th to the 26th, and it's going to be an hour at a time. And you'll see the different dates here. You'll notice most of them are an hour long, like I said, at a time. Either way, it's it's three days going on March 24th to the 26th, and this is just going to get us to test it and try to really, really punch the servers well to just make sure they're set up well for Splatoon 2 and maybe get some bugs out of the way. And seemingly to, I guess, match the Switch's release, at least coincide with it, a couple weeks before Sony has started lowering PlayStation 4 prices specifically on Amazon you'll see this where they're probably giving them back-end rebates of the 50 or 51 dollars that is coming off the top here but you'll see PlayStation 4 slims the newer ones that are bundled with Uncharted 4 and Call of Duty are actually dropping down to 249 and again this is I think more of a strategy because the switch is coming out also Sony was dropping these heavily during the holidays as well to compete with Microsoft. I think in this case, they're just dropping the price to try to get them in homes, even when the Switch hype is going on. And it'll work. Some people will buy them. I mean, it's let's, let's face it, the PS4 is not a bad system or anything. It's a good system. So I think most people should own a PS4. Uh, and in this case, you get a, a decent game, whether you're a shooter fan or you're an action adventure fan for Uncharted 4. And you get a game that's usually $60 like that and the system for $249. It's not a bad deal. It isn't. I'll leave the links for those in the description below if you're even curious about them. They will be down there if you want to check out either of the bundles. And we keep seeing these third-party retro systems come out, like the Retron 5 or the Retron 3 or uh, the Game Freak. There's all kinds of different game systems coming out that are designed to play your older games, whether it be Super Nintendo Genesis, Nintendo uh, Master System. And in this case, Retroblox is actually going to have an optical drive that will play your other games too. And this is coming from a company called Retroblox Inc. They're just calling their system Retroblox just after their company, Retroblox Inc. And they are claiming at this point that it will have full hardware compatibility with every game for all of your old libraries. Seems like a pretty bold claim to be honest, considering some systems have a hard time with different emulation with certain games. I remember Castlevania 3, you could not play that on a clone system for the longest time. Eventually they fixed it. Battletoads was the same way. And those are just Nintendo games, not to, these, not to mention any of the CD games that they want to play. And 
The list is long for the games they want it to support. They want to support Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Atari 2600 specifically, TurboGrafx-16, and then the optical drive games they want to support PlayStation 1, Sega CD, and the PC Engine CDs. And that's insane. I mean, those are all, like the PC Engine CD, is that's an expensive system you usually have to buy. Now, they have kind of come out and said it's going. It's not going to be cheap. <laughs> it's definitely not going to be cheap. It's probably, they're saying it's going to be cheaper than like a $300 price point. Um, but I mean, for all of the stuff it's going to to play, and it's going to do games in 1080p and everything, it, it looks pretty solid. It looks like it's mostly going to use HDMI to achieve that 1080p picture, and it was completely shown off, like fully working at the Retro Gaming Expo in Southern California last week. And if you missed my previous video uh, yesterday, I actually went to the DC Switch event, played the Switch. Played a bunch of games, checked out the hardware. It was actually a lot of fun. You had to get there pretty early. The line was very long, but it turned out to be worth it. It was, it was really cool. You got to play all the different games, got hands-on with the Switch and the Joy-Cons and the Pro Controller, and the whole thing. And it was it was pretty neat because they had all these little, little trinkets and stuff for you, pins and cookies and everything. But the main attraction was the Switch. I was not disappointed. I enjoyed it. If you want to look at it a little more in depth, check out the video I posted yesterday. And if you have any of the other events coming up, like I know there's a Chicago and a San Francisco event, Go to it, just get there early, and uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's, I think it's worth it. So it looks like the sales from Call of Duty being disappointing actually hit Activision pretty hard because now they're starting to lay people off. It's interesting because Activision reported better than expected revenues, but it's pretty obvious that the Call of Duty game that came out, Infinite Warfare, was very disappointing, I think, for them across the board. It was met with a ton of negativity. They had to throw that extra game, Call of Duty uh, Remastered, in there for it to even sell well, because everyone wanted to play that game. If they sold that separately, everyone would have just bought that and probably would not have bought Infinite Warfare like it like it sold just because again most people really wanted that old school feel and i think that was completely emphasized when uh the original modern warfare remastered was selling like crazy according to kotaku this was uh recently reported on there activision actually laid off five percent of its workforce the five percent seemed to center around a couple internal studios but mostly around Binox and infinity ward of course infinity ward worked on infinite warfare now it's not completely surprising because keep in mind they're on a three-year dev cycle for Call of Duty, so at this point, their next Infinity War Infinity Ward game won't be out for a while. So that's uh, that's interesting. I guess I would put it a little before 2019 or so, but still, it's a while away, and it's not super surprising after the performance of it. And they have to cut corners somewhere. You cut corners on your weakest link there, and that makes a lot of sense. Which is weird because at one point, Infinity Ward was considered the best part of Call of Duty, and they've really they've really fallen off since then. So you remember how the, how he had that weird like first person view kind of teased at the end of Ultra Street Fighter 2's trailer for the Switch? Well, apparently there was actual pictures of the box art for the game over in Japan, and it shows that yes, there is a full mode for first person. And this was reported by Nintendo Everything. They talked about on the back of the box for the cover art, there is a full mode that is described as Unleash Hadouken. And what it's going to be, from what, what they can read here, is that it's going to be a, a combo score battle in first-person view where you are going around basically shooting soldiers with a Hadouken. Seems kind of like an odd, like, gameplay mode. I'm not really sure where they're going to go with that or if it'll be one of those things where you you know, fire it up, you play it a little bit, and you're like, ah, oh, that's cool, and then you go back to the regular game and forget about it. Uh, you're going to be using Joy-Cons to, I guess, mimic the motion while you're doing that. Again, it seems like just a little... Just a little like uh, mini game you're gonna do again for a little while and then you just go back and you play Street Fighter like usual. So this is interesting. We've talked about that NES Classic a lot recently, the NES Mini, mostly because I got one recently. But the big thing is now that it's been hacked and it's been hacked to the point where there's not much else to do with the NES library, what do they do? They figure out how to put other games on there. And by other games, I mean Super Nintendo, Game Boy, and Genesis games on this system. And this was done by getting the system to run a program called RetroArch. And this program will allow it to emulate these other systems. Now, they have said that there is slowdown with some games, and the UI will not look anywhere as nice as it does now with the NES games. And I guess those are just sacrifice you have to make. I'm not really sure why you would have the little NES guy play other games. Because at that point, you could have bought a much cheaper Raspberry Pi loaded RetroPie on there, and you're good to go with probably better performance and more controller options. So uh, again, it, it gets a little out there when you start doing this. I'm sure hackers will just keep tinkering with this thing. It's basically an Android uh, board though, essentially. I mean, it's a, it's a little ret Raspberry Pi almost really. So 
Yes, you can do that. That's fine. I'm not really sure why you would get out of the realm of NES games with it, but who knows? We'll see what they come up with. And the last bit of news comes from Forza, and specifically, the entire franchise itself has now reached $1 billion in retail sales. And this comes on the heels of a big report saying that Forza Horizon 3 has now sold two and a half million units between the Xbox One and Windows 10 machines. They did not really specify a split as to who is playing on which one more. I'd be very curious to see how many uh, PC gamers are playing there and seeing how close it is to the Xbox One number, because I, I still think Microsoft is starting to lean more and more towards that PC market and getting away from having to build a very expensive Xbox when you can just sell people who have your software the game at that point. But that's still pretty impressive. Uh, Forza has been around for a long time. I played it on the original Xbox. Horizon 3 is a blast. I, I really like those kind of racing games that aren't like heavily simulation. I feel like those can get kind of boring sometimes, but it will have more competition when the next Gran Turismo comes out. So we'll see how it sells then. But it is, it, it's just interesting to see that Gran Turismo has kind of faded away a little bit. And now we have Forza just kind of taking taking over the whole racing scene right now. And guys, that's going to do it for Newswave today. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know what you think about all the stories we talked about today. Maybe you have an NES Classic and you're considering playing Genesis games on there. Maybe you're looking at the Retro Blocks and you were like, oh, great, it plays, it plays Sega CD games and Turbo Engine CD games. Awesome. Or maybe you were curious about Forza. Maybe you're a big fan of it and you're happy to hear it's been selling well. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I will see you next time.